How's it going, guys? And welcome back to BL3's Be Forgotten, the series where I take a look at underused and not often talked about pieces of gear to determine whether or not they deserve to be remembered within the modern meta of the game or should be left behind and forgotten. And today we are taking a look at the cheap tips. If you'd like to farm the cheap tips for yourself, you're gonna want to fast travel over to the VIP tower in the handsome jackpot and grind the elevator up where you will hit a save station right outside of Jackbot's arena, which of course you'll jump down into to kill jackpot so that you can get yourself a cheap tips. The cheap tips is a legendary Hyperion SMG which is able to roll in any of the elements. The unique effect of the cheap tips is that when damaging an enemy there is a chance for a casino chip to drop from it which when picked up will grant a stacking buff of 50% weapon damage for 12 seconds. It is worth keeping in mind though that when picked up in bulk you will only get the effect of 5 casino chips at once so it is good to pick them up with a slight delay. Along with that despite being a moxie skinned weapon this doesn't actually give you the usual lifesteal that comes with those. The cheap tips has had one buff which was an increase to the amount and drop chance of casino chips. So first off to get this out of the way, 69th episode fucking let's go baby! Funny number haha <laughs> epic! <clears throat> Anyways, going into this, I heard murmurings about the cheap tips previously, but I really didn't expect much. I assumed this gun was like the old Ridian, pretty solid with its strengths, but nothing too special in the end. But no, this gun isn't just good. I believe it genuinely rivals some of that of the actual meta SMGs in this game. However, it does have a couple downsides to it, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's talk about the good first, which the best thing about this is those casino chips. You can stack so much fucking weapon damage on this thing, it's crazy. Even on fucking Zane, you can feel a massive difference once you get stacking, which is really saying something considering Zane stales the poorest off of weapon damage since he already gets so much through violent momentum. Which comparing this to violent momentum, usually at the high end you can get around 3 to 400% weapon damage during usual play with just 5 out of 5. The cheap tips will match that at just 6 to 8 chips. At 10 out of 5 in violent momentum and a full build to actually move at the highest speed that you can, you can get around 800 to a thousand percent. The cheap tips matches this at 16 to 20 chips, which does sound like a lot and it kind of is. You do definitely have to build around this gun a little bit to be reaching that, but once you actually have a decent bit of fire rate, that would be pretty easily attainable. This gun is fucking disgusting, but like I mentioned, it is kind of dependent on fire rate. As the higher your fire rate, the more chips that you will end up spawning. With lower fire rates, this gun does actually kind of become a hell of a lot worse, which is why if you're using it on Moe's, I would really recommend you do not use Drowning in Brass. Although, sticking with some character synergies, Amara also has a pretty interesting one. While she doesn't get a hell of a lot of fire rate through her skill trees, she can also spawn bonus chips through Indiscriminate, and not only is this spawning more chips than otherwise she would be, it also has the added benefit of laying them out around the battlefield for you to pick up as you continue to move around, providing an even higher and easier uptime of that damage. What I do believe does end up holding this gun back from being popular though, despite its strengths, is that it is very reliant on a gimmick which is pretty much a mini game. You have to keep these stacks up once you build them as you can continue to snowball from there. If you lose your stacks though in the middle of a large group of enemies, it can be devastating to suddenly lose all of your damage and it can be very difficult to get it back up from there. It is very high risk, high reward and that isn't everyone's thing. Hell, it's not even usually my thing, usually I prefer consistency, it's just that I found this gun to be very very consistent, it's just that there's inconsistent times where it's not great. And if that's not your thing, that's fine, but just know that 99% of cheap tips users quit right before they hit it big, and 100% of people who do not use the cheap tips will never be financially free. Now while I do believe that this is a very good gun, I do still have a single change that I would make to it, and that would simply be adjusting the length of a stack. I think it just needs to be increased by a few more seconds, maybe to 15 or 16 seconds. While I do think that it should still be a relatively short amount of time. Right now, I think it's perfectly fine for Zane as he can spam out so many of these chips and doesn't really have any animation downtime for his action stills, but it can be rough on the other three when it comes to action still animations and grenade throwing. You want to utilize your stack time to fire the gun as much as possible to get that damage and to get the most out of those stacks, which makes it really painful, especially for longer animations like Fade Away. Overall though, I love this thing. I had a lot of fun with it. I think it was a really good gun 
on and quite the surprise to see it just shred through anything I pointed it at. Though as some of you may know, I might be a little bit biased here because I fucking love Hyperion SMGs, which is why I'm surprised that this one eluded me for as long as it did. But as you guys may also know, the Hyper Focus has been my favorite for quite some time and I often go on long-winded boober rants about how back in my day the Hyper Focus was good. Well, finally, I think I can rest because the cheap tips honestly feels pretty damn similar. So if you're like me and miss the Hyper Focus, while this gun is very different and far more gimmicky, once it was stacked, it felt like it was shredding enemies just the same way that the Hyper Focus used to. So any of my Hyper Focus homies out there, definitely give this a try. But that's going to about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, all that. Down in the description will be a link to my Twitch channel where I'll be live right after this video goes up, and just below that is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.